128, 5.3 lists as sequences. So let's jump onto, let's jump into idle first. And let's have a little fun. All right, so we're gonna do one and two, and then we're gonna add, we're gonna concatenate three and four. Okay, boom, those, those can conflate or concatenate into one list, one, two, three, four. And then let's say, uh, one, two, and times three. What happens there? Oh, just like you, you would hope that it would be. So times three, it just repeats it. it repeats one and two three times. It just literally appends one, two, two more times uh, to make it a total of three. All right, so let's do grades. Gets. Let's do A, B, C, D, and F. All right. Okay, so two to four is gonna be zero, one, two, and three, right? So we include the first number, same as range, right? Include the first number, but not this one. It's gonna be one before this one, so that's what C and D, zero, one, two, and three. It includes two and three, but not the fourth index, all right. Let's do len grades five. All right, which makes sense, right? There's five, five letter grades. Okay, so now let's do my list gets one comma spam comma. Notice that the commas are all outside because you got to keep the full whatever the, the character is or the, the value, whatever the value is. You have to you have to keep that separate in between the commas which includes quotations if it's going to be a character string. And then you, and then my list. And notice that it's okay to put, you know, single and then double, and it doesn't matter. It'll just fix it, fix it all up, and it makes it single. Okay, so now let's do, here it made it single, single quotes. Okay, so now let's do month two. So we're going to go to new file. Program. is a list used as a okay so now month is gonna be our month is gonna be our list it's gonna be Jan it's gonna be Fed let's check this out these are all separate, right? Separate values of the list. Still have our three letters per month. And there they are. So there's our list. So now N is going to be eval input.
print the month abbreviation is months Okay, all right. It's going to be months n minus one because this is zero, right? So, so if month, oh no, no, this is this is going to be one because our n is going to be one. So they, the user generated, the user creates that number, so that's one. So it's going to be one minus one, which is zero. If they put two, it's going to be two. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to call main. We're going to invoke this function main, and then we should should be very similar to our previous program in the previous video. Uh, just a little bit different. So let's go to Python. I thought, uh, I thought we invoked main. I guess I gotta save it. Oh, I didn't save it. Was that dot up here? No. Okay. So month two, let's run it. All right, let's do four. April, all right. Nice. Run it again. We could do January, yep. Run it again. November, there it is. So very similar, just a little bit different. Uh, because our lookup list, uh, so lists are mutable. So strings and lists are both sequen sequences. However, lists are mutable, which means they're changeable. The value of an item in a list can be modified with an assignment statement, with the equal sign. Right, strings on the other hand, cannot be changed in place. So they give us an example. So let's let's check out the example. So my list is assigned A4. 26, 15, 10, list 2, list 15, my list is 0, my list. All right, so we changed it, right? We changed 2, we just immediately changed it. We said, all right, a list of uh, index 2 is now assigned to 0. And then we call my list, and voila, it's been changed. Now let's do it with my string. My string gets assigned hello world, right? And then my string two has a value. It's L, right? But now let's do my string two equals P, or not is equal is a, gets gets P or is assigned. P. 
string object does not support item assignment. So that's that's the issue on 130. Um, very important to remember. That's why we like lists if we want to do this uh, changing in just right right there in the in the list without without even moving anything in the list. Just just you know. So 132. We've got the ordinal characters. The numeric code. The ord function. So ord a is different from ord a, right? And actually, so the way I remember it is like the large characters, the capital letters, come before the lowercase letters. Um, so I kind of think like a chess game, I guess. Actually, you know, that's kind of a bad analogy because um, the, the big, the large characters are in the back, the pawns are in the front. Um, I don't know what the best analogy would be for me to remember that. I just remember that the the big characters come first. So, uh, and there's a whole bunch of stuff on the internet, you know, <clears throat> um, in terms of ordinal uh, characters. So now we're at 133. So let's do text to numbers dot pi. Okay. It's a textual message. Sequence of numbers. Utilizing the underlying of the message. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Oh, no, 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 no. It's going to go here. It's going to go inside the quote. Let me think, why would it go inside the quote? Well, because it's part of, since the blank space is, can be part of a quote, obviously a full skipped line can be part of a quote. This can be part of just one one quote. <coughs> it makes sense, right? So, um, and then they help us out there too. But um, that's just how I try to think about it with my young, uh, uh, my juvenile brain, just being pretty new at this, decently new at this. Um, one of the things that I've learned or that I'm trying to learn every day, is that it's okay to not know everything. Just to be very patient, even more so than, you know, in academics. Because some of this stuff is just, it's just, it's harder because there's just so much, you know, with, and there's so much to go and it's, it's, um, but it's also exciting too because it's really 
what you're learning can be extremely practical. It's not like academics where some of it isn't as practical um, in terms of being able to build an application that everyone loves or that a lot of people, you know, use. Um, you know, so I mean, there, but you know, I think that was huge. I think that discovery was really, really big uh, for me because I, I started, you know, a little, little bit of HTML, a little bit of this, a little bit, and, uh, and um, you know, and I, and it got, it got tough uh, at a couple times, and I just sort of took a break for a bit. And but once I finally realized the two big things are, it's okay not to know, right? You don't have to know every answer, just to keep plodding forward. You want to go try to find stuff out, but you have to also manage your time and solve the problems, you know, the best way you know how, and et cetera, and like live your life and really, you know, try, try, try to learn the, the, the big stuff, that, you know, and then you learn the other stuff on the way. So that, that that's really huge. That's a big, big change in terms of my thought process um, from academia, because in academia, you know, if you memorize basically the mo most important, you know, problems from the books, you know, it's you're going to do well on the test or you're going to do well on the essays or you're going to do well, you know, on the assignments. So it's not like anything outside of that, you know, whereas with this, even though we're using books, you know, it's still, it's really meaty material. Um, and there are a lot of question marks because it all depends on, you know, your browser and your laptop. And your, I mean, there's just a lot of factors that, that come into play. It's not, not as simple. It's just, oh, read, read these pages and, and memorize these. And, you know, it's not rope. So that's number one. This is be okay with not knowing. And just keep plodding away and tr try to fill in those gaps, but, you know, ask questions and da, da da Secondly is knowing that it's a lifelong learning process. Like, you know, I love to learn. I've always loved learning. I've always been curious. But this is just such an exciting sort of adventure. Um, but, yeah, it's a lot of work. It really is. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, now that I know that I, I want to keep you know, like once I really made that, made that jump just emotionally and intellectually and sort of philosophically, you know, then it's just a lot more relaxing now. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll learn, you know, um, just whatever, you know, whatever work I'm doing or projects or whatnot, um, you know, I'll just keep learning in that regards as well. But, you know, I think that because this industry is so dynamic, um, it also helps with complacency, right? You're not going to get complacent. Um, but it's also just endlessly fascinating if you love learning. And I've always like, really enjoyed learning. So I think it's definitely a plus in that regards. Um, but yeah, you know, I think, you know, so anyways, enough enough about that. But I, I just, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to share that. Okay, so here I'm going to print. Here are the Unicode codes. Here are the Unicode codes. Oop. Here's a message. I'm going to print out the Unicode values. line before prompt and then main all right so text and numbers dot pi on there. 
Jesus. Please enter the message to encode. Okay, so let's let's enter it. Let's do hello world. Yeah, I don't know if it's right. I don't know. I mean, I guess we can check. Let's check. Board of H. There it is. So we could go print. So we could do for, okay, so um, string. Let's just write this. Let's see if I can make this work out. Okay, so for care in string um, print or there. There we go. 72, 101, 108, 108. 111, 32, 87, 111, 114, 108, 133. It worked. All right. Very nice. So, all right. Until the next video. Thanks a lot.